Hey, this is Mark Henry, author of Dancing with Energy, Healing Magic, and Mysticism. I'm here to talk to you more about the occult and the paranormal. Well, today I'm going to be talking about the ends. So the title is Ends Call to the Darkness. Before I get into that, I just want to remind you to please uh, like and subscribe. Um, when you do those things, the U it convinces the YouTube algorithm that this video and my other ones are worthy of being viewed, so by doing that, you help other people see it. Um, also, um, as you're aware, that I have a Etsy store in which I am offering uh, attunements, which are spiritual connections to various spirits like angels, uh, demons, and other spirits. So feel free to check that out. Um, I have 22 at the moment, and the uh, these particular entities are those that can meet pretty much every need you have, whether it be uh, for finances, protection, um, seduction, um, pretty much anything that you can think of. Wisdom, for example. We have a couple spirits for that. So check it out. See what fits your needs. There are a lot of people making some really extraordinary changes in their life because of it, because it's all about self-development and becoming a... Um, a different more powerful person and that is all about you know magic in itself okay uh, so the links for that will be in the description so let's get into today's video so ends the calls to darkness so what is an in an in is basically a sequence of sounds similar to like a mantra uh, that could be that's used to call a particular demon now, ends aren't part of any recognized language, nor does it have any particular grammatical structure to it. Uh, they're typically used for uh, respect, adoration, uh, invocation, evocation, pretty much trying to connect with a particular demon. The theory is that the in chant uh, vibrates at the same frequency as the particular demon, so each demon has their own sort of series of sounds of utterances and by doing that then you're starting to build that connection with the demon and also for you to be noticed by that particular spirit um, now I don't I'm not aware of any particular ends for angels I think the closest thing we probably have is the uh, Enochian language to uh, contra the Enochian angels uh, but there are no ends in and of itself for angels. Now, if we look a little bit about the history of ends, we go back to uh, 1585 where demonolater uh, Alexander Willett uh, first referred to these utterances as ends. Uh, he, you know, that's as far as we have in, as far as the written literature is concerned. Uh, now, if we fast forward in 1963, we have one of the most uh, prominent demonolaters, which was uh, Richard Ducante, who was the first person to really come up with, compile a comprehensive hierarchy of demons for which to work. He also did things like uh, he started uh, a particular guild, the Shadow Guild of Demonolatry, which was a group and a network of other groups around the country to uh, network. Now, the, this hierarchy is part of uh, 25 unpublished volumes by Ducante, which is commonly known as the Ducante Grimoires. Now, the interesting thing about ends is that if you look at, uh, you know, if you read them, that what's happened is that even though that you know you are reading one particular in that these ends are said to be consistent and reliable across the grimoires of different demonolater families in different locations even far away locations so these particular ends were at some point uh, channeled or you know they were inspired and written down and recorded and when 
uh, these families, you know, when, when everything was being put together, it's like, okay, yeah, this is basically the same thing for these particular uh, demons. So how would one go ahead and use these ends? So the obvious way is if we're talking about, I said that this is similar to like a mantra, would be just to repeat the end out loud or maybe even to yourself, whatever your preference is depending on the situation and context in which and your location of where you are. The second thing would be, since demons typically have sigils, you could stare at the sigil and then repeat the N in order to derive that connection. Well, how many times? Well, it's just like anything in magic. You kind of do it until uh, to do the process until you start to get kind of a result. So if you're not feeling the connection after repeating the end after five times, then you go ahead and continue doing it until you get that connection where you can kind of feel the presence of the entity around you. Or if you are doing more invocation type of stuff, you can feel the energy uh, coming up from within you. Uh, the third thing that people do revolving around the actual saying of the ends would be uh, some people are kind of eclectic and they may have come from a um, maybe a, a Indian or Tibetan Buddhist background in which case that uh, malas are typically used and a mala is uh, a think of a necklace with 108 beads on it Typically, they represent, you hold on to one bead, you know, for each uh, particular mantra or prayer. And then as you kind of go along, you go down. And it helps you keep track of whether you did the 108. Now, there's certainly no requirement to do an N 108 times. But if that, if you like kind of, uh, kind of a particular ritual or routine of doing things, then the mala would work for you because when you get to the end you'll know that hey I've done the 108 and that particular 108 is kind of a uh, a magical I guess number in that particular tradition not the demonolater but in uh, the Buddhist Indian uh, way of thinking perspective okay uh, why do ends rather than something else well, uh, one of the reasons why I think it's a good idea for some people is because some people are more auditory in their processing of things. Um, some people, for example, may be more into music or play an instrument, musically inclined, and that the, um, the saying of something out loud is uh, very compelling and it feels very powerful. So chanting in general is to satisfy that auditory processing. Now, if you look at other ways, I talked about a sigil, so that's more visual. So people who are very visually oriented might feel more comfortable doing a sigil or creating a sigil or working with things that are more visual. Now, if you want to cover all the bases, of course, you can do it all. And uh, that is basically it. I just want to give a, give a quick rundown. If you are interested in uh, demonolatry and ends and all those sorts of things, um, S. Connolly is a pretty good author to research some of her books on that particular topic. Okay. Uh, again, um, I'm going to put a link in the description if you want to check out the Etsy store. I'm also, if you're interested in attunements in general, what it is and how to work with them, I have a Facebook group. So I'm going to put the link in the description about that too. And if you want to uh, participate in that group, just click on it and uh, you'll be a member. Okay? Again, please comment. Let me know what you think. Have you ever used ends? Do you think that they're kind of a cool thing to do? Have you known anybody that has gotten results with ends? Let me know. I will talk to you later. See you in a future video. Bye-bye.